This is Freedom, a lecture by Neville Goddard. Freedom by Neville Goddard, October 28th, 1968. When asked what is the greatest of all the commandments, God answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Accept this commandment. Live by it, and you will be free from all secondary causes. There is only one God. He is the Father of us all, who is above all, through all, and in all. He is a universally diffused individuality whose name forever and ever is I am. You may not be aware of who you are, what you are, or where you are, but by being aware, you are mentally saying, I am. Every conscious being says, I am. And if there is only one I am, then I am one individual is diffused. I am the sole cause of all that is. All things were made through imagining and Without awareness was not anything made that was made. In the eighth chapter of Matthew, one of the miracles of Scripture is recorded as an acted parable. It is said that when he entered the boat, he fell asleep, and a great storm arose. So they awoke him, saying, Lord, we perish. Save us. And he said, Why are you afraid, O men of little faith? Then he rose and rebulked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. If there is only one cause, then he who quelled the wind and the sea is the one who caused the storm. There cannot be another. If there is confusion in your life, and you resolve it in your imagination, and the world bears witness to what you have done, you cause the change. And since there is no other cause, then did you not cause the confusion also? There is only one God and Father of us, all who is above all, through all, and in all. If he is in every being who says, I am, and there is only one God, no one can accuse another, for God's name is not he is, but I am. No matter what appears on the outside, I am its cause. Assume full responsibility for the things you observe, and if you do not like what you see, know you have the power to change them. Then exercise that power, and you will observe the change you caused. If you are truly willing to assume the responsibility, you are set free. If this universal diffused individuality is in all, then the incarnation must be regarded in a different light. We were taught that the incarnation took place 2,000 years ago by a unique individual who was the incarnate God. But I tell you, humanity is the incarnation, the central figure, personified as Jesus Christ, is the perfect archetypal figure everyone must express. He is called the true witness, the firstborn of the dead. Now, incarnate in your body of flesh and blood, you are dead in the sense that you have forgotten that you are the creator of all things. And do not see yourself creating anything you observe. The morning paper tells of what she, he, and they are doing, and you cannot re relate their actions to anything you have done. Yet there is only one cause, only one God, who is resident in you as your awareness, your own wonderful human imagination. The parable tells us that God entered a boat and fell asleep. Humanity is that boat, the ark where God the Father creates all he slumbers. Even though you do not know the people you read about, if the reading disturbs you, you are the cause of the conflict. All imagination I am dreaming, causing the misfortune and unhappiness of those who live, I have touched with feeling. When you awaken and recall your dream, do you always know the people there? 
do you know the children that were yours in the dream? The people who frightened you, you never saw them before. So how could they be bothered than that which you caused? You do not recognize them, yet you, the dreamer, caused them to do what they did. The same thing is true here. If the actions of a seeming other cause a motor response in you, even though you do not know them, your awareness is the cause of the storm. But when you awake, memory will return and there will be a wonderful calm. God, the universally diffused individuality, is asleep in everyone. His transcendent revelation is personified as one called Jesus Christ. Thus, personification awakens the memory in you as to who God the Father really is. God did not break up the I am and give each one of us a portion of himself. He gave each one individually his whole being. I not, cannot be div divided, and I am God the Father. If you haven't yet discovered this, I am still asleep. In order to discover your fatherhood, you must find God's Son foretold to be yours. While asleep in the state of Sal, you do not recognize him. And when you ask, whose son are you, young man? He answers, I am the son of Jesus, the I am. When you awake and recognize God's son, David, are you not Jesse? Are you not God, whose name forever and ever is I am? It takes David to reveal you to yourself, yet you were his father before you fell asleep. Now, dreaming your life into being, you fight against seeming others, calling them devils and Satan. You endow your shadow world with causation, thereby becoming a divided being when God is not divided. There is no devil. There is no Satan. There is no being outside of your own wonderful human imagination. I, even I am he, I killed and I make alive. I wound and I heal and none can deliver it out of my hand. I am the Lord and there is no other God. I form the light and I create darkness. I make the wheel and I create woe. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. Isaiah 45. He who creates the evil creates the good, the wheel and the woe, the light and the darkness. He who kills is he who makes alive, and he who wounds is he who heals, and there is no other God. If you really believe you are the one spoken of here, that it is you who create the evil, the good, the wheel, and the woe, then none can deliver it out of your hand. Then you are set free. You will never again believe in another, but know that your life is self-created, that you create the storm as well as the peace and the calm. No longer will you believe he, she, or they did it, for you will recognize them as reflections mirroring either the storm or the peace and the calm within you. Having entered the boat called the Ark, God fell asleep, and there he remains until the doves bring him word that the flood of illusion is over. Dramatized as an acted parable, it is said that Noah put forth his hand and brought the dove into the Ark with him. This is beautiful imagery and true. In my vision, the dove descended through what appeared to be crystal clear water. He seemed to float, using his wings like a swan. Lighting upon my extended finger, he smothered me with kisses as the vision came to its end. Because everyone is the whole God, everyone will personify the perfect archetypal specimen called Jesus Christ, lost in confusion, not knowing that humanity is the incarnation men think of this archetypal specimen as the incarnate God. Yet, the one grand commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. The word Israel means the man who rules. 
not like a God, but as God, because he knows he is God. And the word translated Lord is I am. Now, let me translate it for you. Hear, O oh, man who rules as God, the I am, or I am is one I am. We are not a bunch of little I ams. Our I am is the one I am who is God the Father. If this is true, then God cannot be divided. And the whole of him is wherever you are, wherever I am. There is no he, she, or they in I am. If you will completely accept this and you will set yourself free, you may immediately see the effect of what you have done in your imagination, but it must come because there is no other creator to stop it. All things are made through awareness, and without it is not anything made that is real. It is imagination who claims, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. I form the light and create darkness. I form the evil and I make the good, the wheel and the woe. And there is no other. When the Jesuits speak of Satan, devils, and demons, it is because they do not know the greatest commandment. All of the Ten Commandments are based upon the negative thou shalt not, except one, which is love thy father and mother. The commandment found in the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy with ten words contains all ten commandments in an entirely different presentation as Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Maybe you cannot accept my words now. Perhaps you feel the need to blame another, to have a scapegoat and believe the cause to be something you ate or drank. But why did you do it? What caused you to do exactly what you did? A disturbance in you. The storm in you caused the gland to be out of kilter. The gland cannot be the cause of your distress, but your dream can. The world, not knowing the single cause, will try to find something on the outside, but there is no secondary cause. I received a letter this week from a lady who shared this self-revealing dream, saying, I am in a place totally devoid of comfort. There are no curtains at the windows or rugs on the floor. My sons in clean overalls are sitting in straight back chairs against one wall while my daughter in starched long cotton dresses is opposite them. Looking much like the Quaker children here, my children appear to be without emotion, without feeling or creative abilities. We are waiting for father. A young boy enters with a message stating that the work which had to be done in the children is finished, and therefore the father is not returning. Then the scene changes, and we are in a farmhouse. I look out the window to see fields of golden grain ripe for harvest. My eldest son, now radiantly happy, comes running into the house, exclaiming that for the first time he has created for himself, his entrance was like magic transforming the room as all my children began to use their talents, creating, laughing, animated, and alive. Before, like automation, they had only obeyed the father by executing his will. But now that his work is finished, he is withdrawn himself, and they have become creators in themselves. What a beautiful experience she saw, the world in miniature form. The father's withdrawal is recorded as his death. He tells us, unless I die, thou canst not live. But if I die, I shall arise again, and thou with me. A little while, and you will see me no more again. A little while, and you will see me as yourself. Having withdrawn to dwell within, it is from there that you move, and not from without. All that I, the Father, am, you will know yourself to be. If God is the Father of all life, then you are the Father. If he is a creator, you are a creator. Whatever God is, you will know yourself to be. Now, God comes out of the desert with signs and wonders. 
the most outstanding sign is that of the fiery serpent. For everyone who sees it lives. As your journey out of Egypt begins, the fiery serpent is released. When the curtain is torn from the top to bottom and all of the rocks are split, you are destined to fulfill scripture and, like me, know from the personal experience that you are God the Father. I have shared my visions with you, telling you how true and wonderful the story of scripture really is and that there is only one way of salvation. Although unnumbered volumes have been writing, given you many ways of redemption, there is only one. I am the way, and there is no other way. Matthew tells a story of his awakening in dramatic form, claiming they awoke, saying, Lord, we perish, save us. It is the unearthly wind which awakens you, and you are its cause. Awakening within your boat, your ark, you leave it behind as you enter an entirely different world as God the Father. Having purposely imposed the restriction of death upon yourself, knowing that you had the power and the wisdom to overcome it, you laid yourself down and fell asleep in the ark. And when the time is fulfilled, you awaken within the ark. Come out and witness the symbolism of your birth from above. A few months later, you fulfill the 89th Psalm as you find David and your memory returns. In the book of Samuel, Saul, the demented king, made a promise to anyone who would bring down the giant opposition to Israel that he would set his father free. This is done by discovering the father of the son. So Saul asked David to identify his father, and David says, I am the son of Jesse. The I am. So the father is set free when David brings down the giant who, in your sleep of death, opposes you and your memory returns as to who you really are. Although I answer to an earthly name and sign my checks with it, I know who I am. I can tell you who I am in the hope that you will believe me. But in truth, I am only addressing myself for I am in you, and you are in me, and we are one. Everyone will have the same experience, and in the end, we will all return to the one body, one spirit, one Lord, and one God and Father. We will all return from the victorious march through the death as the same God, but expanded beyond our wildest dreams because of the this excursion of the mind into a world of death which seems so final. I cannot promise that if you accept this 100%, you will not have a headache tomorrow or that the boss will not fire you. But if you accept this, you will know that your boss had no chance in the matter. You will know that you caused the firing. Maybe your dreams transcended your present limited position in that business and only by being fired could you be realized. One day, I was fired from J.C. Penney Company, working for a year and a half, running their elevator and being their errand boy, making $22 a week and paying $5 room rent. I could not understand it when they let me go, but my dreams, my desires transcended my position there. So they had to do what they did in order for my desires to be realized. Believe me, you are the cause of the phenomena of your life. Be a good bad or different. If to you the news is dissatisfied, you are the dreamer of the dissatisfied storm. But the day will come when you will awake to discover that the storm is over, that there is only one cause and that is awareness. I know it is easier to give advice and show the other person where he is wrong than it is to acknowledge that he is only reflecting the wrong in you. It is difficult to accept the concept that the world is bearing witness to your thoughts, but it is true. If you do not like something or someone, do not look at it or them. Look within to the one who is causing the image. There is only one God, one cause of all life. He is not only above all and through all, 
he is it all. The universally diffused individuality is in each one of us in his fullness. Dwelling in each individual bodily, the father sleeps until the storm is over. Then he awakens and rebukes the storm that he created during his sleep, and there is a great calm. If you will accept this as your philosophy of life, and do not turn to the left or to the right, but claim you are solely responsible for the phenomena of your life, you will find it much easier to live. But if at times life seems to be too hard to bear and you find a secondary cause, you have created a devil. Devils and Satans are formed from man's unwillingness to assume the responsibility of his life. To see another other than self is to build a golden image, asking a priest for forgiveness, calling him father in spite of being told to call no man on earth father. Seeing him as an authority, man goes warring after a man-made false image. So what is freedom worth to you? If you stop short of the ultimate, you do not really want freedom. If you were enslaved, what do you have that you would not willingly give? It is entirely to be set free. Do you really believe there is only one God who is in you in his entirety? And his name is I am. You do, although you have forgotten who you are, where you are, or that you have a son. One day the wind will awaken you during a storm. And as you come out of the ark, the storm will abate. Then memory will return as he who has always been your son stands before you and calls you father. As scripture unfolds within, and then you will know that the internal story has always been there. It was a sealed book until it unfolded within. Let the world remain in the storm if they want to. But if you accept my words, you will be set free from any secondary cause. And you who have been causing your storm will find peace and be truly set free. Now let us go into the silence. This has been Freedom by Neville Goddard.